Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Ashley Mayu, two nice stakes races at Woodbine for two year olds on Sunday. Before we take a look at race number three, the South Ocean for the Phillies, remember the DRF is a nice deal for DRF TV viewers. 10% off old DRF past performances. Shop now by accessing the QR code on your screen and please use the coupon code DRF TV10. Here's the South Ocean. We're going six and a half furlongs on the Tapita surface. Only a field of five, but it's a fairly competitive bunch. The three Bren Gun Girl was an impressive debut winner over the synth earlier this meet. I feel like it's pretty evenly matched in terms of figures. There's not necessarily a standout on paper. That's why you mentioned the number three, eight to five on the morning line. The one I love to win, fresh off a win, two to one. The, the wild card is the first time starter in here for Roger Atfield, the number two silent strike, who is entered uh, in another spot you can see on the, the 19th in race number five at Woodbine. But has a slew of workouts, has Kazushi Kimura. So maybe there's things to like about the firster, but it's a compact field, but a little bit of a tough race to get through. Speed might be key in such a short field. We throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. Bren Gun Girl sat off of the pace in her debut, but it appears she has a little bit of speed. One jab too many showed speed in her debut. I would expect her because she's going to be one of the longer prices in this race to be really aggressive. I would think the outside runner is going to go and could potentially be the pace setter in here. Uh, Ella, it is, was forward two starts back on the Tapita at the six and a half furlong distance. But um, I, I think the hand's a little bit forced with the outside runner. Also, the fact that blinkers go on today, that could make a difference. I love to win. The number one is the fastest time form U.S. late pace rating, and we'll see why. Here's her most recent start. She's the only two-time winner in the field, and I love to win had some work to do. It looks like she's in hot water here at about the 316th pole. These two horses on the lead aren't really stopping, but I love that I love to win lives up to her name. She keeps finding a little bit more, and she's not only getting past this horse, she's getting away at the wire. Yeah, she moves really comfortably to the wire. And I think the additional half of Furlong shouldn't, you know, work against her in any way. And uh, looking at her so far, both of her wins have been on the Tapita. I like that she showed last time out she can sit the trip and pass horses. Um, again, she gets a compact field once again. So maybe that helps her chances. She draws well. Emma knows her very well. And we looked at that race. I love to win. Ends up being much the best. She has to face one jab too many again, who ended up finishing last in that field. So um, I think there's a lot to like about her, I think, in terms of the horses that we've seen so far. She is the most proven on the surface. Here's the X factor, the number two silent strike. Roger Atfield is great, and he can certainly win with a first-time starter. Silent strike, sire, silent name clicks with 12% of two-year-old debut runners. The dam didn't win, but she's fooled four winners from as many starters. And the second dam was a really nice horse on dirt, a graded stakes winner sprinting. So there is a little bit of pedigree here, and it's not like she's facing the strongest field in the world if this is the spot they opt for. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do. Maybe they take a shot. I think her works have been pretty good in the mornings. A couple of solid gate drills. So you can see back in September and more recently on the 6th of October. And, um, you know, when you see those works, at least they've been evenly spaced. And you can go back, right? When I use Formulator, I, I select all of the works. And the first work I see is August 10th. So I like that there's really no gaps in those workouts. Maybe she just showed up to the track a little bit late. In terms of pedigree, we talked on the top side, the mare in terms of her foals, um, the best one I've seen a little bit of, Sweet Serenade. She's been able to run on anything at a variety of distances. So um, you have to like what you see. You mentioned Roger can get them ready to roll at first asking, but she just has to face horses that have already had that race day experience. And maybe that's a little tough, regardless of the compact field and the stake. Trainer Kevin Attard is having a sensational year, and Bren Gun Girl took a lot of money for her career debut. Bet down to favoritism in a nine-horse field. She did not disappoint. She settled outside, and she was wide on the backstretch, but she was quick enough to get into position, turning for home without losing too much ground, and then she readily runs by the leader. I thought this was a nice professional performance for a filly that still uh, has some upside potential. And the way she draws clearer, Dan, you think additional ground is what she needs, right? Five and a half, maybe not her ideal distance. She's going to get an additional furlong in this spot. And I think she did everything right. Um, she wasn't in for the tag. That's sort of being the condition with those maiden optional claimers um, where the, you know, provincial breads, the Ontario breads are 
able to be protected. I, I just think there's a lot to like about her for a burn that does well with horses first time out, but really does well with those repeat trips to the winter circle. The number four, Ella, it is graduated two starts back at a price, but she did so over this distance, over this surface. And I thought she ran just fine last time out in that stakes race on turf going seven. Ella, it is, was on a hard chase behind an odds on gate to wire winner. And it's not like that horse was blazing up front. She kind of had things her own way. So Ella, it is, was on a hard chase and she really didn't give up too much ground in the stretch. It was a good effort. Yeah, and you wonder if she's able to get a similar trip now, kind of chasing just off of it and if she's able to pass horses. I thought her maiden score was good. She did it quite easily, and Sofia Vivas has been able to now in those two starts get her forward and get that position early to not give up anything. Um, my concern with the maiden score on the Tapita compared to the others, I, I don't really know what she faced. It was a big field, but there's been one next out winner. The other horses really haven't fared very well. Their figures have been light. But I, I do like that she at least has that stakes try next time out. They did switch surfaces, and she still ran very well overall. And one jab too many completes the field. A pace-pressing winner, two starts back. They just threw a lot of speed at her last time out, and I just didn't think she was ready for it. She was outrun early and then was sort of one paced after that. This pace figures to be a lot slower, and that's why we think she can be closer to the pace. And that at least gives her a puncher's chance at a price. Yeah, and with the blinkers on, you have to think that this is going to be a sun mission here from Jose Campos. And probably not the worst thing for her, just to make that one move early and hope that she can sustain her bid. I feel like when you look at this field, the only wild card is the two silent strike. Assuming she stays here, you don't know what Kazoo she's going to do. Um, and that could maybe, obviously force the hand of the five even more. But she looks to be the pace in here. Whether she can hang around for a share is a different story. My one knock against her is I love to win has finished in front of her in both of those outings, her last outing and her debut. Let's take a look at our top picks for the first of the two stakes races at Woodbine for two-year-olds on Sunday. I love to win, the only two-time winner. I don't think she's going to be outrun behind a slow pace. If this turns into a sprint, she's got the best kick. No, and last time out, they went fairly quick early, 22 and 2, 45 and 1 to the half, and she was just a couple of lengths off of it. So I think with the inside draw, she gets another compact field. I think Emma's going to be able to get that same trip. I guess, you know, the other horse I was torn between them is the three. You have to be really impressed with her debut, Dan. I'm with you. You're going 1-3. I'm going 3-1. I like Bren Gun Girl's professionalism in her debut. I think there's a little bit more in the tank. And I think she can get the jump on I Love to Win turning for home. 1-3-4 for Ashley. 3-1-4 for me. It's the South Ocean race number three at Woodbine on Sunday. Good luck. Hey, buddy. Let me tell you something. If you really enjoyed this great content, just click the like and subscribe button right here. And if you enjoy the race of the day, stakes, previews, and lots, lots more starring me, Please click right here. You're not gonna, you're not gonna regret it.